Hey guys, Viking Reefing here. If you watched my last video, I said at the end of it that the next video that I would be uploading would be a video about Cyano and how I control it. Well, I lied. Change of plans. Uh, I realized that I've never done a full overview of all the gear that I use to run my reef tanks. So we'll be doing that instead. Uh, sit tight for the Sayano video, it'll be coming out shortly as well. Uh, the point of this video is that I'll be showing off all the tech I use on both of my tanks, both the big SPS tank and the smaller Nias Opus tank, which is more centered towards LPS and softies. Uh, this will be a two-part series, so it's not overly long. It's probably going to be quite long as it is. And if you're wondering why the camera started shaking just now, we are watching a couple of, or three cats uh, for one of our neighbors and they just sipped by here. So in this first part, I'll be going over basically everything on this side of the wall. So in the next episode, I'll be taking you through the sump. But for now, we'll stick to the actual tank, so to speak. Um, I'll start with the big tank, work my way from the top down to the bottom and then we'll head over to the Nias Opus. And by the way, I see huge results when you guys really like my videos. Uh, it really helps spread them around. So if you feel like helping me out, please smash that like button. Well, with that out of the way, let's get into it. So at the very top is my light fixture, which is a Giesman Aurora V12. So it's a full LED fixture. I've used Giesma fixtures for almost 20 years now. Um, and this is the first all LED fixture that I've ever used on. Oh, well, I had a short run in with an all LED fixture like seven or eight years ago, which didn't go well. So let's not talk about that. But this is basically the first all LED fixture I've ever used. And what I really like about this fixture, that it basically provides you with what you used to get from T5s combined with halides. So you have the diffused sections here, which basically have light bars going all the way here. And you have focused pucks right here. So you both get very bright and focused lights, um, which will have very high part. Uh, and you get diffused light, which will spread, which will spread the lights all throughout the tank. As you can see, I'm using a 150 centimeter fixture, and my tank is two meters long, and I grow acros all the way to the edge. If we go one step down, <laughs> we have a quite a dirty lid here. Um, I generally clean this lid off. I just throw it in the uh, shower and just hose it down like once a month or something and it's due for a clean right now. But this lid is a custom job from Top Lids. I got this lid because I actually had a couple of jumpers in this tank. Um, some Bimacolathus Antias jumped out. These guys. Uh, even though this tank is Euro-braced, they still managed to find a way out and I hardly ever had jumpers in the past, but apparently um, you can have that issue as well, even with the Eurobrace tank, so that's why I got this. Um, obviously my tank is custom, so this is a custom job as well. So it comes in three parts with cutouts, or like auto feeders, and the next thing I'll be talking about. So if we look down the tank here, you can see that I have three of these things, or well, you can see two of these things here and an auto feeder over there. Um, these are ocean motion engines. What they do is that they do this. They make the pumps oscillate backwards and forwards. Um, and what I find is that it really helps creating random flow throughout the tank. Uh, it's a huge benefit in my eyes when you have a tank fairly well stocked with SPS and you will have run into problems with shading and things of that nature. Uh, what's kind of unique about the Ocean Motions engines is that the 
holders are 3D printed. So they can basically make a holder for any pump that you might like, uh, which is very cool in my opinion. I'm obviously using three Nero 5s on my engines here. Uh, what I like about the Nero 5s is that they are very low profile and they have quite a wide dispersion of flow. So it really uh, fits well when they're sitting on the back wall and just pushing the water forward. I'm not creating a jet that will just blow all the sand away from uh, the front of the glass. Um, so yeah, super happy with that choice. I'm also using a Eheim auto feeder, uh, or well, I use Eheim auto feeders on both my tanks. And that's basically the only feeder that I would ever use. Um, I've used them for well over a decade now, and I've never had any issues with them whatsoever. And if we keep going, we'll end up at even more flow pumps. So I have four MP40s on this tank. And as you can see, the left ones are quite dirty and the right ones are very clean. I cleaned them last night and haven't gotten to the left ones yet. Um, I use a 3D printed guard for my MP40s. Uh, I've had some accidents just when I got them with newly introduced fish that managed to find their way into them, like small brasses and stuff like that. Um, I'm considering perhaps removing these guards because they do have an impact on flow and since the holes on them are quite small compared to uh, what you normally get with an MP40, um, that gunks up fairly quickly. Uh, I am however a bit worried about some of my fish so we'll see what we do about that. And what I really do love about the MP40s is that you have no cords in the tank whatsoever. Um, so it looks really neat and clean. And one would think that it would be fairly well stocked in terms of flow. However, I do find that I might need to add some additional flow down the line, perhaps put some like uh, gyre style pumps up here on the edges. Um, just so I have something that can like just shoot over all the corals, particularly this rock, which I, I'm fairly confident I built it a bit too high really. Uh, I would need something oops, to make the flow pass over it more of a gyre effect in the tank. If we go down here, we have my controller box, uh, which is made by Adaptive Reef. Um, so the entire front pane of my cabinet is acrylic. So what I basically did uh, when they uh, built this thing for me, I basically just took a punch saw and sawed out an opening for it here. Um, so I think this came out really neat. Uh, if you're interested, I do have a video on the entire process when I built it. Um, and in this cabinet, I have the drivers for my MP40s, you can see it right here. Um, I have a Proflux 4, which controls my tank. Um, so it controls like my ozone, uh, it controls my skimmer, which makes sure that my pH doesn't really skyrocket. And it controls some heaters and stuff like that. Um, I have a dosing pump right here. I used to use the uh, modern reef system, which is a four part solution. Uh, but since switching over to a calcium reactor, I'm not uh, really using this pump. I'm still dosing some balling, but I, on a exceptionally small level. Um, I do have still, I do still have the, uh, all the balling tanks hooked up. Just if I can see that there's some issue if I'm not around, for example, if I'm on a vacation and uh, I screw up and the uh, carbon dioxide runs out, I can dose balling to remedy the situation. Underneath it here is my cage rector. So this is basically a automatic alkalinity tester, which I've had now for, I want to say two years, uh, and it's been rock solid. I I currently test four times a day since I fairly recently switched over to a calcium reactor 
Um, I want to test a bit more than I used to, just to make sure that nothing goes awry. Um, I'll probably back off to three or twice a day uh, in a couple of months or so. And I think that's about it for the big tank. So let's have a look at the smaller one. So this is the new tank, the Nagus Opus 300 Pro. Um, and the setup on this tank is completely different uh, compared to the big tank. Because as you can see, it's more centered around LPS and softies. I do have some very nice flower and enemies as well, and some mushrooms. I want to get more into the soft coral side of things as well. If I can source some cool like Sarcophyton or Nephthia uh, in the future. But as most of you know that for some weird reason it's almost impossible to find cool soft corals nowadays. And they were just all over the hobby when I got into it. Uh, but since I started looking for them, I just can't find any. So that's quite a big change uh, over the past two decades. This tank is lit by three AI blades. I use two grows, which are these two guys, and one glow, which is in the middle. And I just love the sleek look of these things. If you're looking like straight ahead, you can't even see that there's a uh, light on this tank. And I think they give off a very nice light as well. Um, I would definitely be comfortable in running the grows as a standalone light. Um, the glow would look absolutely horrible as a standalone light. Uh, but it really does contrast nicely and provides tons of pop combined with the, uh, with the grows. And you can see here the different uh, spectrums that they are emitting. So the grows are a fairly white light, or at least uh, if I use my setting. And the glow is very blue, so it provides a lot of like royal blue, UV, and uh, purple. Like I said, I only use Eheim auto feeders, and uh, this is another one. Um, the fish here are quite slow, so I use a feeding cup. Um, so they most of the time won't go up to the surface to feed. So I really want to make sure that the food just doesn't like go into the overflow and uh, get caught in like the filter roll or something. So that's uh, what I'm using this cup for, uh, to getting some more time to, f to feed basically. We'll do the same thing here. We'll go down a step. And I, my uh, <laughs> twin spotted goby has made a mess in the tank. Well, it's a fairly good cleaner, so I guess that's good. Um, this tank. The flow is from my gloss at a couple of places. So I'm not sure if there's something wrong with this particular one or if they made some sort of a change to them recently. This is one of the offending parties that was crashing about when I was trying to shoot the video. This is uh, Gandalf. He is a Maine Coon and he is, I think he's about five months old. So we got three of these little rascals at home at the moment. <laughs> yeah, the mic is really funny, huh? Wasn't much to say about the Nios tank since there's not a huge amount of tech on it. Um, but the tech I am using, I'm very happy with on both of my tanks. There's basically nothing I would change at the moment. Um, the only thing I am considering is perhaps changing out the uh, or with the 12 uh, for two smaller Aurora units. Um, I think that would give, give me even better, well, both spread and par. Not really that I need it, but I'm kind of a lighting hog. So that's why I would make that change. As you can... Hmm. That's the microphone. Boop, boop, boop. I'm trying to shoot a video here. So I hope you liked this video. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. I try to respond to every comment that I get. And stay tuned for the next video. Then we will go over all the details of the sump. And I think that's probably the video that a lot of you guys would be uh, waiting for. 
I have been bad at showing off my sump, so uh, stay tuned for that. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe so you don't miss it. All right, guys. Happy reefing and have a good one. Bye. Bye.